going to ask you a question. How much do you think Kenneth Copeland is worth? Now, he's one of the leading, leading Protestant ministers. How much is his net worth? $740 million. How much is Joel Olstein worth? Tens of millions of dollars. How much is the one called Lamb worth? Tens of millions of dollars. How about Benny Hinn? That's a good name. Benny Hinn. Tens of millions of dollars. One evangelist you will see said, well, I chose private jets. And he takes it, shows the interviewer, shows on the wall and said, Here, here's a picture of my first jet. Here's a picture of my second jet. Here's a picture of my third jet. Now you go read Ezekiel 33. Are these men feeding themselves or the flock? That is a display of the great false Christianity of this world. They're serving themselves. They're preaching another Jesus. They don't know the truth. And that's why they are successful. Remember what Satan promised Jesus if he would bow down and worship him. He said, I'll give you the whole world and everything in it because it's been delivered to me. Who do you think brings the benefits of all of those millions to those evangelical preachers? God? Do they preach the word of God? No, they don't. Now, as I have said, how many times are we going to see it today? The source of all the lawlessness in America rests with all those ministers who profess their ministers of God but are not. Now, you need to understand something. Everyone is hoping, well, let's all get behind Trump and things will get better. I doubt it. I don't think it's going to happen. I'll tell you why. Remember what it says about the blood of Abel? What did God say to Cain when God asked Cain? Abel, or, or Cain, rather, where's your brother Abel? I don't know. And God said, his blood cries out to me. Now, I want you to think on that statement. And I want you to think about what has happened here in America. Now, we've talked about this time and time again. But now it's reached a proportion that God's hand of judgment is coming and because of the 62 million that have been aborted. You talk about innocent blood. You talk about God avenging the blood of the innocents. Okay. Now then, let's add to it. Let's tell you the truth. What's happening in the world? And this is why you need to do exactly what Norbert said. 
you need to take up the responsibility in your life and you need to know and understand what is happening in the world. And I'm going to cover how you're going to survive these evil days because they are not going to get any better. If perchance they may get better, perhaps that gives us another opportunity to preach the gospel and pray that God will open the doors. Okay. Here's one. FBI Director Ray leads diversity training with White House officials with famed pentagram tattoos. Listen. This government, especially the deep state, is in the hands of Satan the devil. Now, why has that happened? Because how many people truly are seeking God? Very few. Even among the evangelicals who are supposed to be Christians, the amount of abortions among the women and with the encouragement of the men is exactly the same proportion as those who are not even inclined to be religious. So think about it. Is there any movement to change it? No, it's multiplying itself in 50 states with Planned Parenthood and the Temple of Satan, keeping everything open for more abortion. And recently, a judge in Tennessee made a ruling. You cannot restrict and, and say that children cannot go see drag queen programs. This nation is in the grips of homosexuals, perverts, liars, cheaters, and everything else. And that's why it's so bad that it is. And look at what they're doing to Trump today. Now, if perchance he gets in, will he be able to clean up the deep state? Will he change anything? Will he himself turn to God? Will he help other people turn to God? Will he outlaw abortion? Will he outlaw these things that, that are legal, such as the temple of Satan? Now, I want you to understand one thing. Very important. Which is this. God holds all of us, every person in America, responsible. And especially the religious leaders and the political leaders and the businesses. Remember what it says in Revelation 18 about the merchants of the earth? They waxed rich. Now remember. What did Jesus say of the times we're living in? All right. Now, I want to bring up another thing to you that adds to it. Okay. Okay, which is this. That they have uncovered in Instagram a vast, and they don't know how many millions, a vast underground of child pedophilia. And young teenagers in the grips of Satan's sexualization of themselves, putting themselves in view online. This world is evil. This nation 
is evil. And everybody says, oh, this is God's country. Well, it was. But not now. They say we have a great constitution. It was good. However, the Bible is better because it comes from God. Now then, as great as the Constitution is, when evil people take over, it becomes worthless. If they can indict and arrest under false pretenses, a former president of the United States, what do you think they're going to do to the rest of the population when they have absolute control? Now, I want to bring up something else here. Many things are occurring in the food supply that we know nothing about. One of them is one of the pesticides that is put out by the chemical companies. It is causing great disruptions in people's physical beings. Glycosate. Let's see what else they do. You've heard of genetic engineering, haven't you? There's a lot of it. What do they want to try and do? They want to try and make everything better. But how do they try and make, thing be make everything better? See? The truth is, if you reject God, you're only going to create more evil, which will look good because you think that it will have a good effect. All right. Here's this doctor, Dr. Brian Artis revealed that his unvaccinated wife, Jane, just tested positive for scorpion and snake venom. Okay. How is that possible? I had that double checked by Ron Carey, our webmaster. It is true. What they do is this. They break down the genetic code of these venoms and these poisons, and they pick out certain parts of it, and then they splice it into soybean and wheat and other products so that when insects will eat them, the insects will die. Huh. Now, what do you think that's going to do accumulated in a person's body? Hmm? Now, I, I want to bring another statement to you in hopes that we understand it. Jesus Christ said that the days we are living in, if they are not limited, if God had not set a limit on it, there would be no flesh saved alive. See, because everything that there is in the world, including us, is all based on laws that God created. And whenever those laws are transgressed, broken, ignored, puned, ridiculed, set aside by the masters of the Orthodox Christianity, it brings eventually the penalties we are looking at today. Let's come to Jeremiah for just a minute. Let's come to Jeremiah, the third chapter. And God could say this of this nation. You think of this nation and you look at all that God blessed us with and everything that we have. Here's what God says to Israel, Jeremiah 2. 
because he gave us this land. We are the children of Israel, and we're living in a land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So here's how God starts out the book of Jeremiah. Now, the whole nation was living in sin. They were killing their children in sacrifice to Bola. They were committing adultery. They were committing fornication. They were doing all of that and turning their backs on God. Verse 1, Jeremiah 2. The word of the Lord came to me saying, okay? Now let's understand something. The Bible, the word of God, the most important book that there is. All the philosophies of men are null and void. All the teachings of men, contrary to the word of God, create problems, sin, death, okay? So this is the word of God. So he said to Jeremiah, go cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, thus says the Lord. I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothals, when you went after me in the wilderness in a land not sown. Same thing with America. What do we start out with? The Bible. One problem with it, there were very few Sabbath keepers. Most of them were Sunday. So that Sunday keeping has led us to today where they began. Verse 3, Israel was holding us to the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall be guilty. Evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. So God said, I'm going to take care of your enemies. You may have to go fight, but I'm going to take care of them, and I will bless you. You read the first verses of Deuteronomy 28, all the blessings. And then look at what men are trying to do now. They're trying to find ways around all of the effects of transgressing, keeping the laws and commandments of God and loving God. And then when we come to the New Testament, having a false Jesus, a false spirit, and all of that. And God's hand is coming. So we need to learn how to survive in these days. So here's what God said to them. Verse 4, Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord of God, What injustice have your fathers found in me? Show me one sin. Hmm? Now, why do all these evils come upon people? Number one, because of Satan. Number two, because they turn their backs on God. And number three, because they pervert the word of God. And they want to live their own lust. What are you going to do with the whole population of young children today who are already sexualized by the time they're 10 years old? And what are you going to do for all the murders through abortion? Are there 70 million women repenting? And those men who encouraged it? Are they repenting? And the Supreme Court justices, which initiated it, and all of the justices and politicians and religionists who uphold it, are they repenting? Remember where we started. The blood cries out to God. And the hand of judgment is coming. What injustice have your fathers found in me that they have gone far from me and have walked after vanity and have become vain? Where is it? Where is it? Ever heard it said in the halls of Congress? 
And all you congressmen and senators, we're going to open this session and get on your knees. And we're going to confess our lies and our politics and our stupidity, and we are going to change. Will that happen? Biden's a hopeless case of a corrupt, inept person who was put into office as punishment to this nation. I heard one man say, well, if Trump wins the nomination and he has Santos as his vice president, they're going to do to Trump what they did to JFK. They're going to assassinate him. Could be. So God continues, nor did they say, where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, etc.? Okay. Verse 7, I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit of its goodness. And when you entered, you defiled my land and made my inheritance an abomination. Now notice verse 8, because this verifies what I have said. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? And they who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also rebelled against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Okay? So here's where we are. Right today, we in the church, we've got to survive. We've also got to warn. We've also got to let people know what it is. See? Everything that they're looking at to try and change and make things right, they're only going to, to try and solve the effects of their sin rather than repent of their sin and go to God first. So they will know how to handle the rest. Okay? So here's what we're up against. Verse 9, Therefore I will contend with you, says the Lord, and against your children's children I will contend. Okay? That's what we're up against right now. There's some people out there trying to do good, but they're trying to solve the problem of the effects that are overwhelming rather than getting to the root cause. Verse 11, has a nation changed their gods who are not gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be amazed, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid, be utterly desolated, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. Okay, right here. These two evils must be preached and repented of by the people of this nation. Committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. In other words, they've taken the word of God and changed it and twisted it and perverted it and made it worshiping Baal with a false Jesus. Now, let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back in 20. Well, let's continue on with the message today. How to survive in these evil days? How did it come upon us? Well, let's come to Psalm 12, and let's read here the very last verse. This describes exactly what is happening. And you end up being even surprised and flabbergasted when you find out what these people are doing. And especially 
I was just absolutely taken back when on Instagram they have tens of millions of pedophiles activities on that internet. Now think about it. We were told how these are going to, uh, these things are going to be convenient and bring us all together and make us better. Well, look what happened. And this verse in Psalm 12 tells us the last verse, verse 8. The wicked walk on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. Quite a fantastic verse, right? And isn't that exactly what is happening today? Everywhere you look, and you're surprised at how evil that these people are? Okay. Now, let's come to the book of Proverbs. We're going to spend some time there. Okay. Proverbs. Come to Proverbs 11. Now, Proverbs has a lot to do there with wickedness and wicked people and evildoers. So you might do a study through Proverbs. Proverbs 11. Let's pick it up beginning in verse 5. Proverbs 11. Here's how we survive. We'll alternate between looking at what is happening in the world and what our response has to be uh, toward God and toward each other. Verse 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. In other words, having the laws and commandments and spirit of God in our mind, that's going to lead us in the right way. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. See? So you have these two contrasts all the way through the book of Proverbs. Good for us to realize. Okay? Verse 6. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but the transgressors shall be taken in their own lust. And isn't that what happens? Yes, indeed. When a wicked man dies, his hope shall perish. And all that he expected from his power comes to nothing. Now think about that. Gone. God is able to handle it and take care of it. We're able to live through these days only through the power of God. See? Let's come to Proverbs 4. Amazing what the Proverbs tell us and the Word of God teaches us. Proverbs 4, verse 14. Good description of what goes on. You ask the question, how do all of these things transpire? Don't any of these people have any conscience? Well, the answer is, they've been at evil, at evil for so long, they don't have a conscience any longer. And those who are upright, and those who are righteous, they hate. And remember what they are doing. Now we are learning this is a satanic religion. Now, if you haven't gone to church at home and watched the five Satan out of his closet, you go watch it. Because Satan is out and he is running wild and he is delighted with the evil that he's bringing and all of the things that come with it. Okay, Proverbs 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. How do they do things? What are they doing? Don't go their way. See? And go not into the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not go in it. Turn from it and pass on 
And remember this, just because they appear friendly and just because they know how to tell great stories, that's only a cover for their sin. Okay? Verse 16. They do not sleep except when they have done mischief. They've got to conquer new people. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Okay? For they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. And doesn't that describe exactly what's going on today? Yes, indeed. Okay. Let's see also how this works. Because as I mentioned, the whole book of Proverbs is full of this. Let's come to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. See, One thing about the word of God, which is true. It has come from the eternal God, correct? Therefore, everything in it is eternally true. For good, for blessing, or for evil, and cursing. Okay. Proverbs 28. Let's pick that up here in verse 15. Like a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the helpless people. Sound like our government today? Yes, indeed, there it is. Well, the people, the people will fight back on that, okay? Let's hope they do. Let's hope they come to their senses and, and really understand what they are doing. Okay? Now, verse 16. A ruler lacking understanding is also a great oppressor. Doesn't that describe Joe Biden to a T? Right there? He's oppressing everybody. And using the deep state legal system to do it. He who hates covetousness shall prolong his days. That's how you survive. You don't be envious of the wicked and what they're doing and what they're prospering in. Remember, Satan is giving them benefits. A man who is laden with human blood, let him be a fugitive until the grave. Do not let anyone help him. Now, that's quite a thing, isn't it, huh? Does not describe what's happening? Next verse. Whoever walks uprightly shall be saved. That's what we're looking to. To God help us and even save us and rescue us from the things that we're confronted with right now. That's why we need to study and we need to pray and we need to apply ourselves, just like Norbert said. Okay. But he who is perverted in his own ways shall fall at once. Verse 18. All right. Now, let's come to Proverbs 29. Let's see the contrast. Here in Proverbs 29 and verse 2, we see what it's going to be when we rule the world. See? And one thing we're learning, how not to rule the world, correct? Yes. The only way to do it is God's way. Okay. Verse 2, Proverbs 29. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Why? Because they are looking out for the people to help them, to encourage them. And that's what it needs to be with all of our elders, to help the people, see? To teach them, 
not rule over them. Okay. Our authority as elders is to teach the brethren. Show them the word of God. And we are to live it ourselves. And we are to do, as Jesus said, we are to be serving, not to be served. All right, let's go on. Let's come to the next verse. Come down here to verse 12. This describes Washington, D.C., and many of the governors in America and the rulers in the world, okay? How many listened to, to um, Klaus Schwab and Noel Harari? Those are the two leading ones in the World Economic Forum, okay? And really, when you analyze it, the things that they are saying are like a giant evil cartoon unfolding. If you thought German Nazism was bad with Adolf Hitler, try on Charles Schwab's German Communism and see how that fits. And Noel Harari saying that we're going to be post-humans, we're going to all live together in the flesh, and the Germans are devising, how shall we say, paternity factories to try and artificially reproduce human life so that they can have organs to transplant into themselves to live forever. You ever read some of the stupidity that they write? Okay, that's the World Economic Forum. Run by Satan, the devil himself, in person. All right. Proverbs 29 and verse 12. If a ruler hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. It's exactly what it is in America today. All right? Now, let's come to Proverbs 21. See? Amazing, isn't it? All of this is in the Bible. And because it's from the eternal God, it's always up to date. Verse 12. The righteous wisely considers the house of the wicked. In other words, we're to keep our eyes open to understand what they are doing so we don't get taken down by anything that they're trying to promulgate it upon us or in us or to try and take us away from God. But God overthrows the wicked for their wickedness. And guess Who's going to do that? God has called us to do that. Think about how much wickedness we are going to have to clean up when we come off the sea of glass with Jesus Christ to take over the world. See? Okay, little sidebar. Notice how much more that everyone is believing is in the unidentified flying object object. They tried to uh, change the name of it. I forget what they're trying to do with it now. But think of what it's going to be when a resurrection occurs and they see all these people being raised to the sea of glass and they look and see this great sea of glass up there and all of those who have been resurrected up there and the power of Christ and they're going to do all they can to try and save the world, but we are going to take care of the wicked. See? Under Christ. Okay? Verse 16. 
The man who wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Isn't that what we have? The congregation of the dead. Look at all those people out there cheering Joel Olstein every Sunday. They are the congregation of the dead. All of the politicians that follow Satan, the devil, which are called progressives, they're in the congregation of the dead. Quite an amazing proverb, okay? Now, let's come to the book of Psalms. There are quite a few things here we're going to look at Psalms. And amazing how much this is that applies to human behavior. And the Psalms right now are very important for us to understand. Let's just do a quick survey. Let's come to the first Psalm, okay? Now I want to show you something. What did Jesus Christ say that he was? I am the first and the last, correct? Now, think about this in relationship to the Bible. We have in the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth and all the things and, and men and women and so forth. And that's the first and the first sin and everything right there, right? That's the first. Then you go to the book of Revelation, Revelation 21 and 22, you have the last. New Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, right? Okay. Now let's look here in Psalm, the first chapter. Let's look at this. Let's see how this starts out. Okay. And then we will look at the first and the last. Verse 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. No, you can't marry the wickedness of this world and the philosophy of this world to the truth of God. That's walking in the way of the wicked. Nor stand in the way of sinner, nor sit, sit in the seat of the scornful, but is delight. Is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Now, what's going to happen with that coupled with God's Spirit? And this is why we're here. Now, remember, this is just the first Psalm. And this is why we have to study and restudy and study and restudy and pray and repray all the time because, as Norbert said, we're to grow in grace and knowledge. That's correct, right? That's how we do it. So let's look at this principle here. He shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which brings forth fruit in its season, and its leaves shall not wither, and all that he does shall prosper. Even the trials that we go through, we prosper and learn from them so we can be growing in grace and knowledge. Verse 4, the wicked are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the judgment. Where are they going to go? Like a fire nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You can't combine sinners and those who are righteous together. Okay? For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall not perish. Okay? Now, come to the very last two Psalms in a book of Psalms. And we will look and see the first and the last. Quite an amazing thing. Psalm 149. And as we read this, I want you to think about all of us being on the sea of glass. 
and all of us learning what we're going to do, where we're going to go, receiving our new names, getting our assignments, having the garments that we are given, given our white horse, given our lyres and harps, and singing the songs of glory to God, okay? Verse 1, Psalm 149. Oh, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. On the sea of glass, right? There it is. Start out verse 1, delight in the law of God, of Psalm 1. You come to Psalm 149, you're in the congregation of the righteous. Okay? Let Israel rejoice in his maker. We're the spiritual Israel of God, the seed of Abraham. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises to him with a drum and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He crowns the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds and so forth. Uh -huh. Okay. Then it says here, verse 6, let, his high, let the high praises of God be in their, in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What we're going to do? Going to end all wars. We're going to stop all evil. To execute judgment upon the nations and punishments upon the people. They will, and God will give them a heart to do it, repent. To bind their kings with chains. Now what's going to happen with Satan? What does it say? Revelation 20 and verse 2. Satan is bound with a chain, Right? and their nobles with iron bands, and carry out upon them the judgment written, that honor have all his saints. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, Psalm 150. See? This part of what's going to be going on on the sea of glass. See? And the way that we survive these evil days today is to understand the end goal of everything that we do and where we're going all the time. Okay? Psalm 150. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the, the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the ram's horn, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with the drum and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and harps, praise him on loud cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord, praise the Lord. There's the first and the last. Now I've done this so that you will be encouraged. So when we read some of these other things, you'll understand what is taking place and how we need to combat these things. All right? Now, let's come back here to Psalm 36. And again, just like the book of Proverbs, the Psalms tell you What's going to happen to the wicked? And remember this, the proverb which says, better is the bread of the righteous man than the riches of the wicked. And who gives them the riches? Satan. All right? Psalm 36, here's what we're seeing take place. Verse 1, the wicked utters transgression in his heart, and there is no fear of God before his eyes. And never have we lived in a time where we see that people openly 
hate God, hate the Bible, tear it apart, burn it up, castigate anyone who believes in God. Okay? For he flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity is found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has stopped acting wise, stop acting wisely and doing good. He plots iniquity upon his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does he does not hate evil. Matter of fact, he loves evil. And pure Satanism is out there today. Notice the contrast. This is out in the world, and this is what we are to do to live in it. Your loving kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are like the great depths, O Lord. You prepare man and beast. Preserve, rather, man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the sons of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Now, notice the end result of it. See, again, remember the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. And you'll see this repeated in small ways, in large ways, all the way through the Bible. Isn't that an amazing thing? Verse 7, How precious is your loving kindness, O God, therefore the children of men take refuge under the shadow of your wings, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the richness of your house, and you shall make them drink of the river of your pleasures. Now that's going to be quite a thing. Think of what that tells us that's going to happen when we enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? Let's come to chapter 37. And here's something that can help all of us today. I know when I heard the news what they're going to do to Donald Trump, it was rather depressing. And all the mass media news outlets were glorying in the lie of what they're doing to him. Okay? So, when things like that happen, Psalm 37 and verse 1 applies. Do not frustrate yourself because of evil doers. Don't let it get you down. Remember, their day is coming. And do not be envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Okay? Trust in the Lord. There it is. Always trust in God. Because he is there and always there to help. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cherish faithfulness. So you see how trust and faithfulness work together. Like two sides of one coin. Okay? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And what should our hearts be set to? Entering into the kingdom of God, right? Living his way now, right? Yes. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. Now, you may have a lot of work that you need to do at the same time, but he will bring it to pass. Okay? And he shall bring forth your righteousness like the light and your judgment like the noonday. Eventually, that will be so. Okay? Now, notice this. 
Look at all of the things that we are to do. This is how we are to survive in these wicked days. Okay. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not frustrate yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of him who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. Okay. Then it says in verse, verse 9, Remember, the wicked have their day coming. So we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. Okay. But that is absolutely always true. Evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Now think of that. What God is going to give us. So don't look around and think, well, I don't have this and I don't have that and I don't have the other thing. Whatever you have, be thankful and move forward. God will help you and bless you and take care of you. See? It is but a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Yea, you shall diligently consider his place, but shall not find it. Then verse 11, again, the meek shall inherit the earth. See? Could we have a greater inheritance than that? See? Compare that to the riches of this world. And know that it's all, all the riches of this world is going to come crashing down. One of these days, they've warned us for 20 years, dollar's going to fail, but the dollar is going to fail. Just a little sidebar here. When that happens... And when they institute the digital currency, there's going to be nothing but chaos and confusion. Here just recently, the bank we have dealt with for years was purchased by the U.S. Bank. And every account number was changed. And every direct deposit and every direct payment was changed. And for the first two weeks after they took possession of the bank, the bank was full of people trying to find out what's going on, how is this going to work? And I thought to myself, what is it going to be like when they introduce the digital currency? Huh? Look at all the confusion that that will be. Psalm 37. Let's come here to verse 16. Better is the little that a righteous man has than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. See? That's what we keep our minds on. And what's going to happen to the world and how it's going to take them away. Verse 22, for those blessed of him shall inherit the earth. Now, it tells us that three times right here in this one psalm. And it tells us in Romans, the eighth chapter, what? That we're going to be joint heirs with Christ. And what is he going to inherit? All things, beginning with the earth. And those cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are made firm by the Lord, and he delights in his way. So this then tells us how God is actively working with us, with his spirit in our lives. Every day. See? Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Okay? Now, here's another statement by David, and he was giving this when he was older, okay? 
I have been young. And of course, all of us have, huh? right? Okay. And now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. All the day long he deals graciously and lends, and his children are blessed. Depart from evil and do good. And live evermore. There it is. So if you've been discouraged because of what happened this week and how bad the news was, especially for any of those of you who have been thinking, boy, if only Donald Trump could be president, things will get better. Well, only if there's also repentance of those who have caused all the abortions and all of the shedding of innocent blood, okay? For the Lord loves justice and, and does not forsake his saints, they are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the earth and dwell in it forever. Okay? There it is. See? That's where we're headed for. That's what we're to keep our minds on. All right? Now, let's come to Psalm 57. This is quite a psalm. I mean... It's amazing. Think of how many times that we have gone through nearly the whole Bible, down through the years, and all the time it seems like new things just come out of it and fit what is taking place today in our lives. Here's Psalm 57. Be gracious unto me, O God, be gracious unto me. That's what we need. We need God's grace and mercy. We need God's forgiveness. See? And that's why the daily prayer is, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Because our human nature is right there right in the back of our minds. That's why we need to do what it says here, okay? For my soul trust in you, yea, in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these great troubles pass by. I will cry to the Lord Most High, to God, now notice this, to God who fulfills his purpose. For me. So think about that. That's what God is doing right now, fulfilling his purpose for you. And that's going to result in, when the resurrection occurs, the greatest thing that can possibly be. Who fulfills his purpose for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. Isn't that the resurrection? Isn't that intervening in our lives on a daily basis? Saving us from difficulties and problems? Okay. He rebukes him who would swallow me up, Selah. That means think on it. Now, how does God do this? Next sentence. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth through his spirit to you through prayer and through study, through drawing close to him, okay? My soul is among lions. I lie among those who breathe out fire, the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Well, that's what it's like in the world, Okay? Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Okay? Now, in spite of all that goes on, because the next verse says, there are those plotting after me. Okay? But notice verse 7. Here is a key verse. See? Here it is. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. 
Not going to let anything interfere with what God is doing in your life and what he has called you to do. My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake my glory, awake harp and lyre. I myself will awake the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing of you among the nations. Now we're getting into the fulfillment of this with the uh, millennium being over the whole earth, okay? For your steadfast mercy is great, even into the heavens and your truth to the clouds. That's quite a thing. Come here to Psalm 20, and we'll finish here, because this is quite a psalm. I had someone do a word search and print it out for me. I think it was Michael Dunn, who, by the way, pray for, who's recovering from a stroke, He's beginning to make progress, and we're thankful for that and pray for him every day. But I had him do a study, and he printed it out for all the places in the book of Psalms where it says, May, may the Lord, okay? And all the places where it says, Let. So what this is, both of these, the may and the let, are us appealing to God. And the Psalms tell us how we do that. Because we're to be in that relationship with God the Father and Jesus Christ. So here this Psalm 20 is a tremendous psalm. You get down, you get discouraged, you go to the Psalms. You let those Psalms help you, uplift you give you strength, give you hope, give you help, okay? Now, Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble, showing we are to pray to God when we have difficulties. In the name of the God of Jacob, uh, yes, the name of the God of Jacob set you on high. Okay. Notice verse 2, that we're going to see all of these maze. They're very important. Okay, This is number 2. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. God intervening in your life comes where? Straight from God. Maybe also involving angels to intervene. The third may, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Well, we don't give burnt sacrifice, but the sacrifices of God are what? A broken spirit and a contrite heart. We're not lifted up in vanity. We're not lifted up in self. We're not out to serve ourselves. Okay. Okay, here's number four. May he grant you according to your own heart and fulfill all your plans. That's quite a thing, see? Look at how God is there all the time, never leaving us, okay? Now let's look at it again, for this is number five here. Verse, verse five, we will shout for joy in your victory, and in the name of our God, we will set up banners. May the Lord, now notice this, right here. May the Lord answer all your prayers. So this is how we survive the evil of today. We trust in God. We pray to God. We yield to God and commit our lives to him.